Before I start this video, I just want to ask you guys to please click the link on your screen or at the end of the video to go watch my movie, a movie that I made with a group of friends. It's a very small movie. It was all produced and made and edited by me, so it's, you know, not a big production thing, but I would appreciate it if you guys can go watch it, give me some feedback as I am trying to learn. It's the whole point of this. So yeah, link's on your screen now. It'll be at the end of the video and it's in the description. It's called Creature. Please go check it out. So do you guys like trash? Of course you don't like trash. Nobody likes trash. Trash is disgusting, which is why we get rid of it. We don't like trash in a house, we don't like trash on the floor, we do not like trash in our movies. And although 2023 just happened to be one of the best years for movies that we have had in years and years and years, it is one of the great years, at least from my lifetime, that I've had as a movie fan, we do have our fair share of trash this year. Movies that I would deem as bad. And on the screen right now, you're seeing footage of movies that I deem as, as pretty damn good. Movies that are actually great. And I will not be talking about those movies in this video. Those movies have their own list. The best list. A, a video where I'm gonna gush over them. No, 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 no. This is a video to talk about the worst of the worst in 2023. Now, I'm gonna be honest. This list was both easy and hard to make. It was hard because I couldn't come up with 10 movies, and I wanted this to be a 10, be like a top 10 list. I couldn't come up with 10. I came up with 6 which I guess is a good thing. Another thing with this list is I wanted to make sure these were movies that deserve to get hated on. And what I mean by that is the movies on this list are not small budget, small studio movies that were made by first time filmmakers that, you know, there's a lot of those movies every year that like, just to be quite frank, are not very good. But I am not going to sit here and hate on a small studio for making a risky movie with a risky filmmaker and it just didn't work out. That's not what I'm here to do. I am not here to rip down other filmmakers. That is not what this video is for. What this video is for is to make fun of the gigantic studios that although having all of this money and all of this power, this distribution power, all of this power to hire pretty much any writer and filmmaker combo that they want, these studios still find a way to fail and then suck up the theater time and the theater slots across the country with these garbage movies up to the point that movies like Anatomy of a Fall, American Fiction, Maestro. These movies couldn't get worldwide theatrical releases because the theaters were filled up by some of these stinky, stinky films. So I'm going to go one by one. We're going to go into each and every one of them, and I'm going to uh, kind of rip them a little bit of a new ass. So here we go. Number six is The Marvels, and I feel like I was a little bit too nice to this movie in my review for it. I have gotten to see it again since my review, and yes, it is a very, very stinky movie. And The Fault of the stinkiness comes from the studio. This is a movie that honestly should be good. It has all the pieces to be good. It has a director who has a pretty solid vision for these characters. It has three characters that are interesting and three actors that actually somehow, some way, ended up having chemistry together despite Brie Larson's best attempts to not be good at her job. As good as Iman Milani is though as Miss Marvel, she is not good enough to save this movie from being one of the weirdest, weirdest films I have ever seen. This movie's edit is one of the most bizarre things I've seen, and it is the easiest example of kind of like this Snyder Cut thing, where a studio comes in, they reshoot half a movie, they chop up bits and pieces, like that fucking octopus chef thing from Monsters, Inc., or whatever that thing was, and by the time you're done, you get this weird mess of jambalaya with all, you know, ideas from Kevin Feige, and ideas from the director, and ideas from Brie Larson, and they're all kind of in there, and there's five or six six or seven different movies combined into one monstrosity that ends up being the Marvels. This movie's not good. It's a movie that I'm not going to remember past, like, maybe this video. It's a movie that I'm never going to rewatch ever again. It's a movie that has its moments. It's certainly not the worst film on this list, which is why it's number six, but it's one that I felt like I had to include because superhero movies... They, they need to get better. Next up is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, and I was very, 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 very tempted to put this one number one. Now, I am not super nostalgic over Indiana Jones. I'm not the biggest Indiana Jones fan. You know, I've seen all the movies. I've appreciated all of them. I'm a big Steven Spielberg fan, but I am not the biggest Indiana Jones guy. Not in the same way that I am a Star Wars guy. Another Lucasfilm, you know, project. Another Lucasfilm property. So when I saw Indiana Jones, the Dial of Destiny, directed by James Mangold, the director that I love, I wasn't really that excited for it, but to see the film ripped apart due to a similar structure and writing style and theme and all of this stuff, 
to what the Star Wars sequels did. The same reasons The Rise of Skywalker, all of those movies, Last Jedi, were so, so bad, are the same reasons that Indiana Jones is a disaster. They made the same mistakes. And it's no surprise that this movie was made by the worst producer in all of Hollywood, Kathleen Kennedy. How this woman has a job at Lucasfilm running that company still is absolutely mind-blowing to me. And I know I'm being a little harsh. I know she's probably a very nice woman, but she's not good at her job. Yeah! I'm just gonna say this. Listen, if you play baseball, right, you get 10 at-bats. Three of those at-bats, you get a hit. You're a 300 hitter. You're one of the best players in the league. Well, Kathleen Kennedy had 10 at-bats. She struck out all 10 times. She's batting negative, negative one. It's not even possible. Negative one. She had the most awesome responsibility in the world of heading up the new Star Wars trilogy, the sequel trilogy, the, the most anticipated series of movies ever, and she somehow did them as bad as they could possibly be while shoving in her woman power female you know yay to the woman you know <laughs> character with with Daisy Ridley's Rey who's one of the worst characters in the whole fucking universe of Star Wars and she comes in and teaches all of these men Mark Hamill and and Han Solo and all these people we're gonna show them that they're just sad old men and I you know Rey I'm the the woman Jedi and I'm all powerful for the first movie so here in Indiana Jones and Dial of Destiny we get the same thing we get an indie who's washed up who's old, who's Oh, like just his life has gone to shit and it doesn't get better for him he's a lifeless old sad old man the entire movie and phoebe waller bridge is this proud you know kathleen kennedy shoo-in of a character who's just so good at everything and so perfect and she saves the day how did they write this and think yeah this is what the fans want you can't keep getting away with it! So I'm gonna stop ranting and I'm just gonna let South Park speak for me. It means put a chick in the linguine and make her fucking gay! Number four is The Flash, and I've already talked about this film in uh, another video that I did ranking all the superhero movies of the year. Uh, the Flash is not good. It's adapting the greatest comic book storyline ever, Flashpoint. It's my favorite storyline in comic book history, and it just completely butchered that story. It took everything that made that story out. It took Thomas Wayne Batman and his connection to his to his son Bruce, who he finds out, you know, is supposed to be alive in the real timeline. He's supposed to be alive. That's a big thematical push of the Flashpoint story that's ripped out and exchanged with Michael Keaton's Batman, who just does not work. Although he tries, he does not work. You take out Reverse Flash, you take out the war between the Amazons and the, and, and the Atlanteans. Instead, we get this messy, messy movie that you could definitely tell was reworked in the edit room multiple times, and you had a marketing campaign that convinced everybody that this movie was going to be a masterpiece, when in fact it's one of the worst movies of the year. And it's a shame. It's a shame, because a Flashpoint movie should be amazing. It should be the. It should be one of the best films of the year. It should be a slam dunk of a comic book movie, and Andy Muschietti is a capable director, and this film just did not work, and the way that James Gunn and the studio decided to market it was shameful, and you know what? It's okay that it bombed. It's okay. I'm not gonna say, you know, I feel bad for the people involved that were actually good. You know, you never want to see them fail and have, you know, their movies bombed, but this movie, it was bad. Puck off. Next up is Transformers and, uh, what, what was the title? Uh, the Rise, Rise of Beast, or Rise of the Beast, or some, something like that. Listen, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I'm kind of a big Michael Bay Transformers fan. I, I just kind of enjoy all of those movies, even the terrible ones. But like I just said, the terrible ones, I will openly admit that they are bad movies. They are goofy, they are stupid, they're over the top. You get all the, all the Michael Bayisms of the explosions and the, the grotesque sexual shots of, like, Megan Fox and other woman. Yeah, that's all there. But you also get these really overly epic movies with gr with a great soundtrack and just awesome vibes. That's what they had. So now we have the first ever non Michael Bay Transformers film, and it's just not. It, it's not great. Taking out all of the Michael Bayisms actually made the movie boring and took away any uniqueness and creativeness that those movies had. The things that made those movies so unique and made them stand out are now taken away, and instead we have a generic 
CGI action movie starring a cast that's way too good for this movie with Anthony Ramos being awesome and just way better than anything else that, that's going on in this movie. The CGI here is bad, the plot line is predictable, and it, it's just not very good. The movie's unsure if it wants to be a prequel, a reboot, or a sequel. It just doesn't know. It's just keeping everything open, and it's stupid. Galvatron doesn't look cool at all. Sorry, not Galvatron. Unicron, whatever the hell, the, the big planet transformer thing. It has a really dumb cliffhanger that sets up a movie that I really hope they never make, because it's a movie that nobody was asking for. I respect the art style of the Transformers. I do think they look a little bit cooler, and it did look different than the Bay movies, which maybe was the point, but then yet again, they're sort of connecting them to the Bay movies, so I, I, I don't know. All I know is that this movie is a perfect example of everything that's wrong with Hollywood. You take a big franchise, a big name, of, of a movie franchise that has made billions of dollars before, and you make the most generic, cookie-cutter movie you could possibly think of. You throw it around, you do a bunch of reshoots, you cut it up in the edit room, till you get the perfect, perfectly made, marketable movie. A movie that you could sell toys, a movie that you could sell uh, t-shirts and action figures. That's what they want from this. That's all they wanted, and luckily, you know, it didn't turn out too well for them. Because the movie was underwhelming, I think most people were underwhelmed by it, and I hope that they do, they really, really do a big think on what they're gonna do with this franchise going forward. Because I actually like Transformers. Let Michael Bay make another one. Why not? Let, even if it's terrible. I'm an agent of chaos. <laughs> Well, why not? It's what I want. Give me what I want! And number two is The Exorcist Believer. And, and yeah, this movie is atrocious. And the director of this movie, I think his name is David Gordon Green. He's made some decent stuff in the past, and I, but I just did not like a lot of the comments and a lot of the things that he did with this movie. The original creator of The Exorcist, before he died, was actually saying that he hoped he died before this movie came out because he did not want to see what they were doing to his baby. Look at the mask of my boy. After the final two movies of the Halloween trilogy, specifically Halloween Ends, which is arguably the worst Halloween movie ever, David Gordon Green comes with us at with this, the beginning of this new Exorcist trilogy of films, and what do we get? We get one of the most generic horror movies of the year, and it was a year full of very, very generic horror movies that, at the very, very least, uh, movies like The Nun and, and uh, the Insidious movie, at least those movies had some scares in them, they had some moments. This movie's not scary, it's really goofy, it has some over-the-top acting from children who, you know, I'm not blaming the kids, they did their best, and they actually had some really great moments, each of them, but the writing here just does not serve their performances well, like, it, it, it pushes them to give bad performances, if anything. The movie's hilariously goofy at times, specifically when the priest comes in, like, like the Avengers in Endgame, like, fucking Anthony Mackie coming in, like, on your left. The third act of the movie, although probably the best part of any of these movies I'm talking about, there, there are really good moments in that third act, it just ends so flat. They bring in a legacy character from the original Exorcist film in Ellen Burstein's character, and she does absolutely nothing. She has more screen time in the trailer, I think, than she has in the movie, which is hilarious. It's so terrible, and the fact that she was used in 90% of the marketing was so, so scummy. This is another example of what's wrong with Hollywood. You're taking a big franchise, a name that everybody knows. You're making as generic and cookie-cutter a movie as possible, and throwing it out as fast as possible to try to make a quick buck, and this needs to stop, Hollywood. An Exorcist movie could be cool, an Exorcist trilogy could be cool, an Exorcist sequel can be cool, but you have to put some god dang effort into this, man, and that's what was so frustrating about this movie, is that it felt like it was effortless, and unfortunately, I don't think there was enough creative room, and there was enough leeway from the studio to allow the directors and the creators inside who I'm sure are very talented to make an effortlessly good movie, which is possible, by the way. It's just not possible when you have a studio that's entire intention is just to make a quick buck, which is what I think this is and what I think the trilogy is going to be. And I actually think they are legally required to make the trilogy of films uh, because of some co contract or budgeting issue. So we're going to see all three of them. And, uh... I'm not looking forward to it, but maybe they'll surprise me. And number one, the king of the poop, it's Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumanium. Wow, this movie sucks. It's the biggest piece of dog shit. This movie's actually depressing, because I love everybody involved. I think Peyton Reed is a great, great filmmaker. I think the entire cast is amazing. Even Jonathan Majors, who might be, you know, his career might be over. He's a great actor. Uh, maybe not a great human being. This is a movie that I was so excited for. I thought the idea of Ant-Man going into the quantum realm with his family and having to fight Kang the Conqueror, this new Thanos-level villain, how do you fuck that up? Well, you fuck it up by having some of the worst CGI possible, having no practical shots, essentially in the entire movie, having stupid comedy, 
ripping everything that made the original two Ant-Man movies work, mainly the Michael Pena, the small scale of the stories and the execution of the stories, and overall the family drama. This movie centers around Ant-Man and his daughter Cassie, and although their relationship is okay, it never feels completely natural and earned. And his relationship between all of the other characters, between Hope, who's barely in this movie despite being in the title, between Hank, all of that just felt significantly less fleshed out than it was in the previous two movies. Movies. Kang is an awesome villain. Not that it matters anymore because Jonathan Majors is gone, but he is a pretty cool villain and he gets fucked in the third act, just completely destroyed. Can we go back and imagine if in Guardians of the Galaxy, Thanos, when he showed up for the first time and he told Ronan the Accuser, I will bathe the Star Wars in your blood, that Ronan just whooped his ass, just absolutely murked him. <laughs> Guess what? You would have never had Infinity War or Endgame. And you know what? Maybe not for this reason, but now we're not getting the Kang Dynasty. So, you know what? I guess my, my point is proven. This movie has a really bad ending. This movie, I think, was maybe the final nail in the coffin for the modern MCU. And I know they released a couple of projects and a couple of movies after this, and I know those movies were mixed reviews. Guardians was great, you know, the Marvels was on this list. But I think this was the movie that truly sent the message to Marvel that they need to change their ways. They need to fi fix, you know... They need to fix their course and they need to do better, which is why I think, or at least I hope, that Kevin Feige's over there and everybody at Marvel's working hard to right the ship and we're gonna have a better MCU come 2025 when they sort of relaunch. That's the video, guys. Enough negativity from me. The best of the year videos will be coming the next two days, so expect those. Please go watch my movie and I will see you in the next one.